Hi everybody, I'm Tim Anderson. I'm the executive chef owner of Nanban, Japanese soul food restaurant in Brixton and right here in Seven Dials Market, just a couple minutes from Covent Garden. Um, I've been cooking Japanese food for a long, long time, almost two decades when I got into it as a teenager. Uh, but when I moved here to London, after living in Japan, I started to incorporate London flavors into Japanese dishes. So at Nanban, we are kind of a fusion restaurant. We do what we call Japanese dishes with local flavors. So today, we're gonna make uh, maybe Britain's favorite Japanese dish, katsu curry. And the one we're gonna do today is called surf and turf. And it uses the always delicious combination of scallops and bacon. Now, I wanna talk first about what makes a katsu curry a katsu curry as opposed to a curry. So curry in Japan is called curry rice, kare raisu. That's the sort of basic unit of curry in Japan. And it's white rice with a smooth, mild curry sauce with bits of vegetables and sometimes meat and various toppings. Now, a katsu is not the type of curry. A katsu is not the curry sauce on a katsu curry. Katsu is the thing that's on the curry. Katsu is short for katsuretto. It's a Japanese loan word that's taken from cutlet. So originally, and still most commonly now, it refers to a cutlet of meat. And the most common one you're gonna find in Japan is actually a pork katsu curry, which is tonkatsu. So, it's not a katsu curry, unless it's got a deep fried breaded thing on it. That's your katsu. The breading is important. Uh, but the main thing is, when you do bread, is to use panko. Panko are Japanese breadcrumbs. They're coarser, uh, but also lighter in texture than standard European breadcrumbs. Um, and, and supermarkets sell these these days. I would recommend getting a Japanese brand though because some of the own brand ones are actually too coarse and too chunky and it makes it very, very hard and dense. Um, and then we gotta talk about the sauce. So Japanese curry sauce is a little bit different from um, continental Asian curry sauces uh, because it actually came via the British. The British Navy was cooking a lot of curry and they're the ones who introduced it to Japan in the 19th century. Um, so Japanese curry is based on a sort of British bastardization of original South Asian curries. What that means is it's basically a spice mixture, a masala, and a broth or a stock that is thickened with a roux. You start like a good Indian curry by dicing up an onion. You fry it off with, uh, we use coconut oil, but butter or oil will work as well. Japanese curries often have a fruit element. Um, grated apple is common in Japan, or pineapple, or mango. And you don't really taste the fruit, but it gives kind of a nice sweetness and acidity. Uh, we use banana, and it really works. You don't taste fruitiness again. It's almost like a starchy plantain flavor. Now, we basically sweat off the banana and the onion together. We add spices, lots of them. Coriander seed, cumin, turmeric. This is called gochugaru, Korean chili flakes. You use any kind of chili, really, but Korean chili flakes have an amazing kind of rich, fruity, sweet flavor. They're delicious. And paprika. So a really simple masala. Those get cooked down. We also had coconut milk, which isn't really a traditional Japanese flavor, but it, again, you don't kind of really notice it as being particularly coconutty with all the spices and everything else going on. But what we do add at the end, because um, if you're making Japanese curry at home, the easiest and probably the most delicious and actually most traditional way to make it is by using one of these, which is uh, called a Japanese curry block. And it's funny because it kind of comes in a foil wrapper and looks a bit like a chocolate bar, but you don't want to confuse the two. Um, this is basically a mix of spices and starch, flour and fat and flavorings that you simply dissolve into water. Um, and it makes a curry out of nothing, basically. And it's delicious. Um, so we tested out this recipe using just this, and we made our own using all of these, and we thought which one's better, and we couldn't decide, so we combined them. So basically, you cook all of these lovely spices, and banana, and onion, and coconut together, blitz it up, and then we add water, and curry block. And it's delicious, you get the best of both worlds, you get kind of a homemade, slightly more interesting, complex, fruity flavor, but you also get that lovely, salty, sort of stock cube type Japanese curry block flavor. We have to season it at the end though, and this is sort of where our umami ingredients come in. Um, they're sort of unlikely in a curry, all of these uh, ingredients, but they really do make it. The first one is ketchup. Ketchup, um, I think is underused <laughs> in a lot of recipes. It's a fantastic flavor. It is umami because of the tomatoes, but it's got a little bit of everything. It's a little bit sweet, it's a little bit acidic, it's a little bit salty. 
it kind of ticks all the boxes for taste. It's, it's just delicious. Um, you don't want to use too much because then it'll start to taste too sweet, but just the right amount sort of adds just the perfect accent to not just this curry sauce, but all kinds of other sauces. Then we've got soy sauce. Great to shoot soy sauce in a black bowl. <laughs> um, lastly, slightly controversial, we have MSG. MSG, I don't know what you heard about MSG, but it's all lies. <laughs> MSG is delicious, it's perfectly safe, it's naturally occurring in things like soy sauce, in miso, in ketchup, in scallops, in bacon. Um, it's just a seasoning, it's nothing to be scared of. Um, it's naturally occurring and it's really delicious. Again, you don't want to use too much of it. If you use too much MSG or you're using it like a crutch, it's going to end up making your food taste imbalanced and, and weird, just like if you use too much salt or too much sugar. Think of it like those. You use it as a seasoning. It doesn't, it's not there to replace flavor or make up for deficiencies. It's there to enhance what you already have. So for me, always keep a little bit of MSG in your kitchen, on your table, because sometimes it doesn't need salt. Sometimes it needs MSG. So once your curry sauce is made, and it could be as easy as making it out of a curry block and just adding water, then katsu curry is a very, very simple thing to cook. Um, first of all, you need some rice on the go. Steamed Japanese white rice would be the classic choice. Uh, I've made something called zakoku rice, which just means multi-grain rice. This is white rice, uh, short grain Japanese rice mixed with black and white sesame seeds, quinoa, and bulgur. But you can also use things like frika, buckwheat, beans. There's all different kinds of things you can add to this and it's delicious. Millet is a great choice if you can get it. Anyway, then we got our curry. Um, it's always nice to have a bit of extra veg in your curry. We've just got some new potatoes and some chatonnay carrots, which are cooked uh, separately actually and then mixed with the sauce. And then of course the katsu. So uh, we are doing, as I mentioned, bacon and scallop katsu. So these are rashers of smoked back bacon, which have been breaded with panko, of course, and our nice big fat king scallops with the rose on. They're gonna to drop to a fryer at 180 degrees. Oh yeah, that looks good already. Okay, scallop and bacon katsu. Now all we have to do is plate up. You wanna cut through the scallops so that you can see some of the roe and the white muscle. Boom, like that. I'm quite pleased with this. So the rice has been steamed. So to tip that onto our plate. Nothing fancy, katsu curry. Your sauce and your vegetables, let's tip it out like so. And then we go in with our protein bit of bacon and the scallops, of course, right on top there. Not bad, let me give you a look at that. So we've got some great umami combinations here. First of all, the big one is gonna be the scallops and bacon together. There's an amazing synergy there. Uh, scallops by themselves, by the way, are incredibly umami. I think one of the most umami sort of protein ingredients you can get. And then in the sauce, we've also got uh, a variety of umami seasonings. We've got our soy sauce, we've got our ketchup, we've got our MSG. And so when you eat this, it's gonna be even more satisfying than it looks. This is a very, very umami dish.